now see we already discussed about radioactivity and we discussed this thing in radioactivity three types of decays or emissions takes place alpha decay beta decay and gamma decay now we have to discuss all these three decays first alpha decay we know this thing alpha decay in that the helium nuclei is emitted from the nucleus now the nucleus which one is disintegrated that is known as parent nuclei and the product nuclei that is known as daughter nuclei that is known as daughter nuclei so when emission of alpha particle means helium nuclei takes place at that time always remember this thing for helium z that is 2 a that is 4 it implies that for daughter nuclei the atomic number that will be decreased by 2 and atomic mass will be decreased by 4 compared to the parent nuclei see here the example is given to you uranium 90 234 from that when alpha particle is decayed means when the emission of helium nuclei takes place then we get thorium nuclei so for thorium z that is 88 and a that is 230 so compared to parent nuclei the atomic mass is decreased by 4 and atomic number is decreased by 2 so here helium nuclei is emitted clear and in this type of reactions easily you can understand on left hand side and right hand side the total atomic number and total atomic mass that should be equal see here 90 and on right hand side 88 plus 2 and here 234 that is a and on right hand side 230 plus 4 that is a symbolically alpha decay is represented like this x z a that is the parent nuclei and alpha is decayed then the daughter nuclei atomic number that is z minus 2 and atomic mass number that is a minus 4 and here if we calculate the mass defect then mass defect means mass of parent nuclei minus mass of daughter nuclei minus mass of alpha particle then that is the mass defect and mass defect into c square that much energy will be released here and this energy that will be gained by product nuclei in the form of kinetic energy here we consider the parent nuclei is initially at rest and q is greater than 0 that is the exothermic process that we know clear to all of you example 13.6 we are given the following atomic masses of uranium thorium polonium helium hydrogen now see no this one is not polonium this one is element protactinium z is 91 okay calculate the energy released during the alpha decay of u92 238 and b so that u92 238 cannot spontaneously emit a proton okay first we have to calculate the energy released during alpha decay okay so say here q value that is the energy released so mass of uranium then mass of thorium mass of helium so using these three masses we can calculate the mass defect into c square okay now see here 
mass of uranium that is given to you 238.05079 then minus mass of thorium that is 234.04363 minus mass of helium that is 4.00260 this much u into c square so finally you will get 0.00456 u into c square but we know this thing one u that is equal to 931.5 mev energy so here directly multiply this 0.00456 by 931.5 mev you will get the energy that is 4.25 mev so question a is solved now b so that u92238 cannot spontaneously emit a proton now see when proton is emitted then we can write the reaction like this uranium 92238 protactinium is produced 91237 and proton 1h1 so see on both the side you can check the z value and a value now the q of this particular process so mass of uranium minus mass of protactinium minus mass of proton into c square substitute the values mass of uranium that is 238.05079 minus mass of protactinium that is 237.05121 minus mass of proton that is 1.00783 this much u into c square so you will get here minus 0.00825 u into c square so now multiply this mass in terms of u so by 931.5 mev so you will get answer minus 7.68 mev here q value that is negative it implies that here spontaneous emission of proton is not possible here to emit the proton we have to supply 7.68 mev energy clear to all of you now beta dk so beta dk that is of two types beta plus and beta minus beta plus that is positron and beta minus that is electron okay positron that is anti particle of electron except charge all other characteristics are identical one okay so here when beta dk takes place at that time atomic mass of the daughter nuclei that will not be changed but z will be change but here when beta minus dk takes place it implies when electron is emitted then with it another particle named as anti neutrino that is also emitted and when beta plus dk takes place so that is the emission of positron so that is accompanied by positron sorry neutrino right so here same two examples are given to you this one is for beta minus dk p1532 now here beta minus dk takes place means electron is emitted and with it anti neutrino that is neutral particle that is emitted now see here how this particular process takes place now simple question arise in our mind there is no electron in the nucleus then how from the nucleus electron is emitted okay so actually 
इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट बट न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी लेवल्स आर ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ एम ईवी ओके नाउ हियर व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन द डिसइंटीग्रेशन टेक्स प्लेस एट दैट टाइम सपोज द डॉटर न्यूक्लियाई दैट इज द स्टेबल वन इट इज नॉट रेडियो एक्टिव वन बट दैट डॉटर न्यूक्लियाई that will be in excited state and then by emitting the energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation it will be transited to ground state and here due to the energy difference between the energy levels of a nucleus that is of the order of mev so when the transition of the daughter nuclei takes place from the excited state to the ground state the energy emitted that is of the order of mev and energy emitted that is equal to hf or we can write hc upon lambda so here if we take energy that is of the order of mev and we calculate the lambda then for the emitted radiation the wavelength that will be smaller than the x ray and we already studied about electromagnetic wave spectrum and in that we discussed this thing the waves which have the an uh, wavelength less than x rays are gamma rays and therefore this particular decay that is known as gamma decay see here one simple example is given to you cobalt is converted into nickel by emitting beta minus means electron okay now after emission of electron when the nickel daughter nuclei is obtained but that will be in excited state so by two successive emissions one 
that is of 1.17 MeV energy and then second transition that is of 1.33 MeV it will be transited to the ground state and then it will be the stable nuclei. When gamma decay takes place at the time, always remember this thing, there will be no change in Z and A of the daughter nuclei. Just it will be transferred from excited states to ground state. Clear to all of you? Now, nuclear energy. We already discussed this thing. There are two processes in which the energy is released. One that is fission process, another one that is fusion process. We discussed the binding energy per nucleon versus a graph. So, in that we discussed this thing when lighter nuclei fused, combines and form heavier nuclei. At that time, binding energy per nucleon increases. And when binding energy per nucleon increases, means energy will be released. And this is known as a fusion process. Similarly, in fission process, means when heavy nuclei, like uranium is divided into lighter nuclei or after dividing it form lighter nuclei. At that time also the binding energy per nucleon increases and if binding energy per nucleon increases then energy will be released. So in fusion or fission in both the processes, the energy will be released and that particular energy that is called nuclear energy. That is called nuclear energy. Very simple. Clear? Now fission process. Say here the fission of uranium nuclei that is represented in the text. Say uranium is bombarded by neutron okay so when neutron is bombarded on the uranium so see the reaction neutron u92 235 so it is converted into intermediate mass fragments ba56144 plus kr3689 and here we get three additional neutrons, right? Another type of reaction is also possible in this one. So when neutron is bombarded on the uranium, then U92-235 is converted into intermediate fragments SB51-133 plus NB4199 plus here four neutrons are obtained or another type of possible reaction that is U92-235 is converted into Xe54-140 plus SR3894 plus two neutron. And here remember this thing, the energy released per fission of the uranium nuclei that is of the order of approximately 200 MeV. 200 MeV. And in this particular process, how the energy is released, that one example is given to you here. Just for example, if we take any nucleus that is with atomic mass number 240, and suppose it is divided in two fragment of 120, 120. Now suppose we take the binding energy per nucleon for the nucleus with A equal to 240 from that particular graph, then it is 7.6 MeV. But now if we take the binding energy per nucleon for the 
nucleus which one is with a equal to 120 then that is 8.5 mev so binding energy per nucleon is increased by 0.9 mev so when binding energy per nucleon is increased by 0.9 mev so 240 into 0.9 this much mev energy will be released in this particular fission okay this one is just for example clear to all of you so here this particular energy released that will be in the form of kinetic energy gained by the product nuclei means here neutron will also gain the kinetic energy as well as heat is produced in the surrounding of heat so here see if this particular reaction suppose we think about this reaction in which four neutrons are produced okay now these produced neutrons are tremendous energy are highly energetic one so now here what happens if we think about 235 gram uranium then in 235 gram uranium we know this thing 6.02 into 10 raised to 23 nuclei are there now one neutron is bombarded one nuclei is broken up one nuclear fission takes place and four neutrons are produced these are also highly energetic so now these four will break up another four and each one produce four 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 so 16 will be produced those 16 will break up 16 nuclei each one will produced four 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 so 64 then after 64 will be broken by this 64 neutrons so this is called chain reaction and if this chain reaction becomes uncontrolled one then tremendous large amount of energy will be released and that is called nuclear blast or nuclear bomb and the controlled chain reaction that will give you the continuous production of energy and that particular concept is used in the nuclear reactor to produce the nuclear energy clear to all of you nuclear reactor in a nuclear reactor controlled chain reaction takes place so here we get continuous production of energy now we already discussed this thing when uranium nuclei is bombarded by neutron so different possible reactions takes place here in some reaction three neutrons are released in some four neutrons are released in some two neutrons are released actually here it is considered average value and suppose we take here the average value of all these then as per mathematical calculation it comes to two and a half neutron per reaction okay but here these neutrons which are released in this particular process are with energy equal to 2 mev are considered fast neutrons so here we have to make it slow one because thermal neutrons are advisable for nuclear reaction and thermal neutrons have this much less energy okay less than this one okay so we have to 
decrease the energy associated with it means we have to make those neutrons a slower one now chadwick actually experimented this thing when neutrons collide with lighter nuclei like hydrogen then in this type of collision neutron becomes almost steady in head on collision so here if lighter nuclei are used for the collision with neutrons which are with energy 2 mev then they becomes slower one okay their energy will be decreased so in a nuclear reactor we use this type of material which one is known as moderator which one is known as moderator and we use d2o heavy water as a moderator in nuclear reactor as well as we use graphite also so when this highly energetic neutrons collide with this lighter nuclei then it becomes a slower one clear to all of you now in a nuclear reactor we have to maintain the multiplication factor now what is this multiplication factor multiplication factor is represented by k multiplication factor that is nothing but the ratio of the produced neutron to the bombarded neutron so for successful chain reaction in the nuclear reactor we have to maintain this multiplication factor that is equal to 1 now suppose in the reaction in reactor this multiplication ratio k becomes greater than 1 so if it becomes greater than 1 then we can say the nuclear reactor is in super critical stage so if nuclear reactor is transferred to super critical stage then there are the chances for the blast of reactor because it will be uncontrolled chain reaction now here to maintain the multiplication factor k equal to 1 we have to absorb these neutrons so for that we use boron and cadmium rods and here these rods are automatically inserted inside the reactor it will absorb the additional neutrons and the multiplication factor that will be maintained nearly equal to 1 so these rods controls the number of neutrons produced in the reaction inside the reactor so are known as control rods are known as control rods if multiplication ratio becomes less than 1 then the reactor is said to be in sub critical stage so in that particular case the energy production will be stopped so at that time automatically this rods comes out from the reactor and it always try to maintain this particular ratio or we can say multiplication factor that is nearly equal to 1 and we get the continuous production of energy which one is in the form of kinetic energy of the daughter and product nuclei as well as tremendous large amount of heat is also produced here clear to all of you uranium is naturally available in the nature 
but it is non fissionable so first the process will take place like this uranium is bombarded by neutron and it is converted into plutonium and plutonium that is highly radioactive element and by the fission of plutonium right we will get the large amount of energy clear to all of you so this one is nuclear react here tremendous large amount of heat is released so to control the temperature coolants are also used so for coolants we use water also and other coolants are also used here now nuclear fusion energy generation in stars so actually this nuclear fusion takes place in stars and sun so in stars and sun the energy is produced by fusion process so we know this thing when lighter nuclei combines to form heavier nuclei then the energy is released and here some reactions are given to you see 1h1 1h1 fuse and 1h2 is formed and in this one positron neutrino and 0.42 mev energy is released when two 1h2 1h2 fuse to form 2h3 3.27 mev energy is released and then here 1h2 1h2 when form 1he3 here 1h1 is obtained and in that case 4.03 mev energy is released so in this first reaction two protons combines to form deuteron okay so like this when the lighter nuclei fuse to form the heavier nuclei at that time the energy is released and this is the fusion process okay but here see in this particular fusion process the temperature that should be very high because when this lighter nuclei suppose we think about the proton proton reaction so when proton proton try to combine so at that time coulombian repulsive force is there it implies that this proton proton should reach very close to each other up to the order of a fermi then nuclear forces will be effective one and they will be fused so to overcome this columbian barrier we have to provide large temperature to it and see here in text it is given to you in fusion process the required temperature so to overcome this columbian barrier the required temperature that is approximately of the order of 10 raised to 9 kelvin right and we know this thing at the interior of the sun the temperature is 1.5 into 10 raised to 7 k so here actually tremendous large pressure is also there so under the effect of this tremendous large pressure and temperature this protons fused or we can say combines to form heavier nuclei and we get large amount of energy now see if we think about the production of energy in sun then how in sun this proton proton fusion process or we can say that is pp cycle takes place and that is called thermonuclear fusion so 
here see proton proton combines to form a deuteron and 0.42 mev energy is released then positron electron combines give the energy 1.02 mev then deuteron proton combines produce 2he3 give energy 5.49 mev then 2he3 2he3 two nuclei fuse but see after the completion of these three processes we get one nuclei of 2he3 तो टू एच थ्री टू न्यूक्लियाई अपने थिंक करोसेस टू टाइम थे राइट मीन्स हियर इफ दीस फर्स्ट प्रोसेस टेक्स प्लेस ट्वाइस सेकेंड प्रोसेस टेक्स प्लेस ट्वाइस थर्ड वन टेक्स प्लेस ट्वाइस एंड देन आफ्टर वी गेट टू एच थ्री two nuclei and when these two fuse we get helium nuclei and in that fourth reaction we will get 12.86 mev and two protons again this cycle will continue clear so here 0.42 multiply by 2 1.02 multiply by 2 5.49 multiply by 2 because all these three reactions takes place twice plus 12.86 so when one helium nuclei is formed total 26.7 mev energy is released okay so by this particular thermonuclear fusion process the energy is produced in the sun clear to all of you